Hey y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's me, Amy D. McKnight, and in this video, I am gonna be sharing with you my new amazing journey that I am embarking on. Um, Yeah, pretty much today, as I work to weave through the 600 weave patterns, over 600 weave patterns for four shaft looms, using my rigid head of loom. I hope that in the process of doing this that I will encourage those of you who are rigid head of weavers to know that you can do amazing things on your loom or we can figure out how to do amazing things on our looms because you know what? Many of us love our looms. We love our looms. We're happy with them. We don't want anything else. And um, we're sick and tired of people telling us that we need to get something else. It is so funny. I love weaving, but in this space with the rigid heddle versus floor loom weaving, it's the only space in which some other crafter feels obligated and has the boldness and gall to tell another person who is crafting that they need to get rid of the tools that they're using that make them happy to go and buy something else. That's crazy, but to silence some of those tongues, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for my rigid heddle weaving friends, and I'm also doing it um, to encourage some of the four shaft loom and other shaft loom weavers to see some of the cool things that you can do because maybe you haven't worked through all the patterns in this book and so hopefully it'll be an inspi inspiration to a bunch of people all right I tried to do this video earlier it went long this is my third try I cannot I don't have time to stop it again so we're just gonna roll with it no cuts no edits um, and that's pretty much probably how all the videos in this series will be because I'm going to put it out there. Um, I'm going to document what I'm doing as opposed to trying to create beautiful videos. I will say in advance to those of you who've told me things before, I don't have a tech editor. I'm sorry. I'm just one person who's sharing these things out of the goodness of my heart. I may sometimes say things wrong. I try not to, and I try to correct myself in real time. But if I say something wrong, you know what I'm trying to say? You know, you know, and if you feel it, it's, it's big enough that you need to comment about it in the comments, feel free, you know, to help those who may be confused not to get confused, but I'm doing this as a service, so take it as such. Alrighty, so let's get into it. We are going to be doing four shaft style weaving on a rigid heddle loom. So how does one do that? One does that with three heddles and a pickup stick. This, um, for our purposes, we're going to be using, I'm using a Becca loom, I'm using a 20 inch Becca loom, and I'm using a tendon heddle and two eight dent heddles. And there's a very specific reason why I chose to use this um, configuration of heddles. Most people, most looms, when they come, they come with either an 8.5, um, I mean a 7.5 or an eight dent heddle. And that's the heddle that comes with your loom. And then many of you have bought a second heddle so that you can weave double weave. Yay, good for you. Do that. It's super fun. It's super cool to be able to do it. Um, I don't do it as much. I'd rather sew panels together. That's another story. But knowing how to double weave is a very useful thing to know because not only can you weave double wide cloth, you can also weave fine cloth, which is useful too. So you have your two heddles. You have the one that came with your loom, the second one that you got um, to weave double weave or because you were aspiring to do so. The third heddle that I would say consider getting would be a tendon heddle. The reason why I say a tendon heddle, especially for those of you who want to join with me on this, this journey of weaving um, through or trying to tackle the, the, um, the drafts in this book, is that many of the drafts in the Hand Weavers Pattern Directory are set at 30 ends per inch with two 16 thread tripled. Let me just show you really quick. I'm just going to turn to a random draft so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So in this tabby, you see that it says it is the warp colors are green and yellow. All warp threads are three times two slash 16. Now this book, Ms. Ann um, Dixon, I think she um, is English and they write things and do things a little bit different over there than we do over here. So 2 16 thread is the same as 16 2 thread, kind of like 8 2 8 4 cotton. This is 16 2 cotton. It's super, super thin. And 3 times 2 16 is pretty much 3 threads as 1. And if you look really closely, if you have a book, you can see it. You can see that there are 3 threads. Um, in the warp and this is actually being woven with three threads in the weft. All right, so that's why We're using a tendon heddle because we can do simple math <laughs> We don't have to make this complicated. So we're gonna put three ends in each hole and slot 
or each shaft that we're working with in order to achieve the right um, set and in order for our, our stuff to look like we're trying to achieve in the book. All right, so um, as you may have already guessed, I am using um, two, um, six, 16, two, two, 16, getting confused. You know what I'm talking about? Cotton. And I am going to be doing a sample that is 8.5, um, 8.5 in my read. It's going to shrink down a little bit after I wash it, but we're going to do 8.5 in the read. So the first thing that you're going to do now, this is going to be the front read. This is the read that's going to be closest to you. It's going to be shaft one. The second, sh the second read is going to be shaft three. The third read is going to be shaft two. And our wonderful pickup stick is going to hold our shaft four threads. Don't worry. If you don't understand this, there's actually a series of videos on my YouTube channel. Um, I think it's like bright pink or something. <laughs> and um, I talk all about multi shaft weaving on a rigid head of loom. It was actually part of my paid course, which I have donated to um, the weaving world and put it up on YouTube. So, you know, go look at that and you can get more information. Um, I'm just going to be walk talking through this as I go because this series is it's sort of about teaching, but it's sort of about documenting my journey kind of like as I'm going through this book. I um, kind of sort of wanted to do that with COE, but I can't because if I do, I might jack myself up <laughs> because the COE process is supposed to be uh, an anonymous process. And for those wondering, Amy, what in the world is COE? It's the Certificate of Excellence of the Hand Weavers Guild of America. And um, I was, I was, I'm working on that. And I feel by working through these patterns in this book, I keep pointing to it, but it's off camera. Through the patterns in this book, it's going to help me to do better on my COE samples. All right. So we center our, we center, we mark the, the, the beginning and the ending of where our warp is going to start in the first heddle. Now, on the next heddle, because we're not using the same three heddles, you can. If you have three of the same heddles and use three of the same heddles, your life might be a little bit more easy. But if you don't, no worries. And in fact, if you don't have three of the same heddles and you have three completely heddles, if you only have two of the same, you have a 10 and an eight and a 12 dent, you can still do the same thing that I'm going to do. Um, I explained this in the in the thing in detail. Go check out that YouTube playlist about multi shaft weaving on your rigid heddle loom. I'm not going to go deep into it today, but for today's purposes, since I have two heddles that are eight dent and this one ten dent, I first mark my first heddle so that I know where my 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 warp is going to be, where my weaving is going to be, where my warp threads are going to be. The next thing is is that I need to. I, this is going to be eighty five slots and holes, right? The total number of slots and holes for a twenty dent heddle is going. Uh, uh, a 20 inch wide rigid heddle reed with with at 10 dents is going to be 200 slots and holes plus or minus now this is a eight dent heddle that is 20 inches wide so it is 160 slots and holes hmm that's 20 percent less slots and holes but the spacing is going to be wider y'all y'all get that right <laughs> so you're not going to line it up you're not going to measure in the same distance from your edge, from this edge to that edge, in order to be able to center it. You're going to need to do a little bit of math and, and subtract the 85 from the 160 to get the, the amount that you need to come in on either side in order to have 85 slots and holes in the middle to correspond with the 85 slots and holes that are on this tendon read. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then go watch the playlist. So I'm going to mark the beginning of where that's going to start. And you see it's a little ways over. It's about 20% over a little bit um, from where I started here. And I'm going to do that on both of my eight dent reads. Because we just, we don't, just like you can double weave with two heddles of different dents. Talk about that in the double weave section. Check out that playlist. Um, you can, you can do multi shaft weaving with heddles of different um, different dents, which is totally cool. All right. So next up, once you have your heddles marked the way that they're supposed to be, the next thing is, is that you're going to set your heddles up to thread your warp through your heddles. Now I'll put my pickup stick over here cause I'm not going to need it. So my Becca, I'm using a Becca. 
And my Becca comes with these really cool little heddle holder things. Heddle blocks, I think that's what they're called. So I'm going to have put my Becca, my heddles on the heddle blocks. I've got the heddle one. This is the 10 dent representing shaft one. This is an eight dent. It's going to be in this position, which represents shaft three. And this is my other eight dent, which is also representing shaft three. When it comes to warping multiple heddles, whether I'm doing double weave or whether I'm doing um, multi-shaft weaving, I tend to prefer to do it off the loom like I'm doing it right now. And here's why. I can get between here and see. Now, with this method of warping your loom for multi-shaft weaving, we're gonna warp all three heddles at the same time. I know for some of you, you're thinking, Oh, but usually I warp this hell and that hell and that hell. Here's a very good reason why we're not going to do it like that. Okay, let's go through this again. Shaft one, shaft two, shaft three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You're going to get in your mind. One, two, three. Once you understand that this is shaft one and this is shaft two and this is shaft three, and it will always be as such if you're using this method, then when you're looking at a four shaft weaving pattern, it's very easy to understand when you see something that's threaded on shaft one, you know, oh, it's threaded on the first, this first heddle. When you see something that's threaded on shaft two, you know, it's threaded on the second heddle. When you see something that's threaded on shaft three, you know, oh, that's threaded on the third heddle. When you see something that's threaded through shaft four, you know, oh, that's going through a slot is going to be picked up with my pickup stick. All right. However, if you learn or if you practice just doing patterns for someone who did the work for you and said, oh, okay, you're going to thread this heddle this way. All right. And once you got that heddle threaded perfectly this way, then you're going to thread that heddle this way and that heddle that way. You're, you're stuck. You will always be dependent on someone else doing the work for you. I don't believe in that. I believe in teaching you how to think for yourself because maybe you don't want to weave any of the patterns that are out there for rigid heddle loom that are threaded multi-shaft ways. And the other thing is, is that this me method is the most efficient way of doing it. You can find this in the Xanakis Technique book. Um, the man was a genius for coming up with this. And so, yeah, you know, there are a lot of different ways out there. Um, I'm grateful <laughs> that I came across the crazy ways of, of threading rigid heddle for um, multi-shaft weaving that are inconsistent. This will always be consistent with itself. As long as this is always shaft one, this is always shaft two, and this is always shaft three, and this is always shaft four on your on your pickup sticks, you will always you will be able to do what I'm about to attempt. You're gonna be like, oh, once you understand this, you're gonna realize that this this is epic. Even if I were a, a floor loom weaver, because um, going through this book, this is a lot of work. It's just kind of like trying to cook through an entire really big encyclopedic cookbook. But nevertheless, once you see me do this and warp it a couple of times, you're going to understand that the mechanics of it isn't really that hard. At least that's what I hope. That's my goal. That's my prayer. All right. So what I'm going to do. All right. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing is oh my goodness <laughs> this fell on the floor <laughs> my floor is covered in dust bunnies and i'm gonna <coughs> yeah totally coughing too many dust bunnies anyway in mr zanuck's book you'll find this chart on page 39 and it shows you how to thread your heddles for 50 percent density for 75 percent density for 110 and 200 and 300 um full densities and this is for a four shaft straight th draw threading which is what we're going to be starting out doing in the hand weavers pattern directory i'm going to be using 100 percent density so if you want to follow along with me i'm going to be on page 39 of the xanakis technique book and i'm using 100 percent density now you're going to once you understand this it's going to be very simple to thread and we're starting out with four shaft and what i like about the hand weavers pattern directory is it starts out simple it starts out with four shaft 
and then on the four shaft threading you're doing multiple different types of patterns on a four shaft threading and you just keep building and building and building and building and then it goes into all sorts of cool stuff like overshot and monk's belt and all sorts of really cool things we're going to get into some really fun stuff in the next coming months maybe years we don't know how long this will take we'll have fun we'll be doing this far past when i'm talking about the coe so this will outlive the coe which is kind of cool because my goal is to get that thing done by next year yes and i generally hit my goals all right so what i'm going to be doing is as you can see i have a a warp chain that i've warped and I have my counting threads and everything like that. And I'm looking at the time and unfortunately, I am not going to be able to start threading this today. I'm so sorry. I know you're like, no, show us how to thread this. I'm sorry. I'm going to do it tomorrow. So this is where we're going to stop. I'm just going to leave that there, sitting there and waiting of beginning to be threaded. And we're going to stop right here. So let's recap though, really quick because I got to go, got to go to work, got a day job. That's what pays the bills and allows me to have all my fun toys. Yes, yes. Um, so got to go do that. But let's recap. We are going to be working our way through the hand weavers pattern directory. We are going to be using, I am going to be using a 10 dent and two 8 dent heddles. And this is because this is a configuration that I know a lot of you already have. I'm using two 16s or 16 two. Um, cotton thread because that's the same type of thread that um, Ms. Dixon is using in her book. I'm using a tendon heddle because she is using um, um, two 16 threads set at um, three times three warp threads for one slot or hole. And so that's why we're using this thread. I am going to sort of kind of maybe be using the colors that she uses. I'm not going to stick too hard to that because um, I was at the mercy of the woolery of what they had in stock because right now Maurice Broussard, which is where one gets um, the manufacturer that manufactures a lot of this type of thread, um, he, they're on vacation right now. And so they won't be back until the middle of August, but they were so kind to go and tell me what they had in stock. I bought what they had in stock um, and it should more than hold me over until, you know, um, they get more in stock and they have more of a variety. So we're not going to necessarily stick completely to the colors that are in the book because, well, I had a, a limited amount of colors to choose from. But anyway, we can do this. We can do hard things. We can do challenging things and we can execute at a high level of proficiency. I want you to say that to yourself. I'm saying it to myself because I'm not just saying this to me for this, what we're doing, but I'm saying it to myself for um, the work that I have to do to complete the certificate of excellence. And um, we can do hard things. We can do it well. We can exceed the expectations of others because we are creative people and we find ways of doing things when we think that we can't um, because there's always a way. All right, y'all. So that's what I'm going to leave you on. There's always a way we're going to get this done. And tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, God willing, I will be back and I will be back with, um, with this warp to thread through the heddles. We may or may not get it all threaded tomorrow. We shall see. But um, hopefully I've whetted your appetite and you're excited. Go ahead. If you're on YouTube, give this video a like. If you're on Instagram, you know, give me a heart. If you're in my community, leave me a comment below. Yes. Y'all thought I wasn't ever going to ever get this done. I finally got my second camera back. And so now I can do this. And I'm grateful. I have my, not even a second, my camera back, my my phone that works as a camera back and so I can do this um but yeah y'all I'm super excited I'm super excited for myself I'm excited for y'all and we're gonna do this together all right that's enough talk to you later bye